flowcharts. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to make a hangman game. Um, actually, we're going to actually program it in the next chapter, but we're going to talk about it in this chapter. Uh, this game is more complicated than our previous game, but it is also more fun. Because the game is advanced, we m should be careful. Oops. We should first carefully plan it out by creating a diagram called a flow chart. In the next two chapters, we'll actually write out the code for Hangman. In case you've never played Hangman before, let's le first learn the rules of Hangman. How to play Hangman. In case you don't know, Hangman is a game for two people that's usually played using a paper and pencil. One player thinks of a word, then draws a blank on the page for each letter in the word. Then the second player tries to guess letters that might be in the word. If they guess correctly, the first player writes the letter in the blank. If they guess incorrectly, the first player draws a single body part of the hangman. If the second player can guess all the letters in the word before the man is completely drawn, they win. But if they can figure it, can't figure it out in time, the man is hanged and they lose the game. Sim sample run of hangman. Here's an example of what the player might see if they run the hangman program. We will, we will write later. The text that the player enters is shown in bold. Okay, so it says hangman. Missing letters. Guess a letter. Then this is the what the user puts in. A. Guess a letter. This is what the user types in. O. R. So notice each time there's a part, piece of the man. So this in this case, R was wrong, so he drew his body in. Okay. So if we guess the same letter again, it gives us... Uh, you already guessed that letter. And then guess a letter, C. This is a fairly complicated game here. Okay, so ASCII art. <coughs> Half of the lines of the code of, of the hangar program aren't really code at all but are multi-line strings that use keyboard characters to draw pictures. This type of graphics is called ASCII art because keyboard characters such as letters, numbers, and, and also all the other signs on the keyboard are called ASCII characters. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. We'll learn more about it in, in the Caesar Cipher chapter. Here are a couple of cats done in ASCII art. Designing a program with a flowchart. This game is a bit more complicated than the ones we've seen so far. So let's take it a moment. Let's take a moment to think about how it is put together. First, we'll create a flowchart like the one at the end of Dragon well, at the one at the end of the Dragon Realm chapter to help us visualize what this program will do. A flowchart is a diagram that shows a series of steps as a number of boxes connected with arrows. Each box represents a step, and the arrows show how one step leads to other steps. You can trace through the flowchart by putting your finger on the start box of the flowchart and following the arrows to the other boxes until you get to the end box. You can only move from one box to another in the direction of the arrow. You can never go backwards unless there is a second arrow going back, like in player already guessed this letter box below. <coughs> Here is a complete flowchart for hangman, the hangman game. So, show board and and blanks to player, ask player to guess a letter, player already guessed letter, letter is not in secret word, letter is in secret word. So this, um, this flow chart shows us exactly the flow of the game, which is great. Of course, we don't have to make a flow chart. We could just start writing code. But often, once we start programming, we will think of things that need to be added or changed that we didn't consider before. We may end up having to change or delete a lot of code that we've all, we had already written, which would be a waste of effort. To avoid this, it's also best to think carefully and plan how the program will work before we start writing it. <coughs> the following flowchart is provided as an, as an example of what flowcharts look like and how to make them. For now, since you, you, you're, just start, you're just using the source code from this book, you don't need to draw a flowchart before writing code. The program is already written so you don't have to plan anything out. But when you make your own games, a flowchart can be very handy. <clears throat> Creating a f the flowchart. Keep in mind your flowchart don't always have to be don't always have to look exactly like this one. As long as you understand the flowchart you made, it will be helpful when you start coding. 
We'll begin with a flowchart that only has a start and end box, as shown in figure 8-2. Now let's think about what happens when we play hangman. First one player, the computer in this case, thinks of a secret word. Then the second player, the person running the program, will guess letters. Let's add boxes for these events, as shown on figure 8-3. The boxes that are new to each flowchart have a dashed line around them. The arrows show the order that the program should move. That is, the first, that is, first the program should come up with a secret word. After that, it should ask the player to guess a letter. But the, aim, but the game doesn't end after the player guesses one letter. It needs to check, to, it needs to check that, that that letter is in the secret word or not. Branching from a flowchart box. There are two possibilities. The letter will either be in a word or it will not. This means we need to add two new boxes to our flowchart from the ask the player ask the player to guess a letter box. We can only move to the letter is in the secret word box or the letter is not in the secret word box. This will be this will create a blant, branch that is a split in the flowchart as shown in figure 8-2 or 8-4. If the letter is in the secret word, we need to check to see if the player has guessed all the letters, which means they've won the game. But if the letter is not in the secret word, another body part is added to the hangman. We can add boxes for the, those cases too. We don't need an arrow for the letter is in the secret word box to the player has run out of body parts and loses box. Because it's impossible to lose as long as you are only guessing correct letters. Also, it's impossible to win as as long as you are guessing only incorrect letters. So we don't need to draw that arrow either. Our flowchart now looks like figure 8-5. Ending or restarting the game. Once the player has won or lost, we'll ask them if they want to play the game again with a new secret word. If the player doesn't want to play again, the program will end. If the program doesn't end, we think, we think of a new secret word as shown on figure 8-6. Guessing again. This flowchart might look like it is finished, but there's something we've forgotten. The player doesn't just guess a letter, doesn't guess a letter just once. They have to keep guessing letters over and over until they win or lose. And we need to draw two new arrows so the flowchart shows this. Okay, so these are two new arrows right here. So basically, they we're adding if the um, if the letter is not in the secret word, we go back up to ask player to guess letter, right? <clears throat> okay, are we forgetting something else as well? If the player guesses a letter that they've guessed before, rather than have them win or lose in this case, we allow them to guess a different letter instead. So we add this box. Player already guessed this letter. <clears throat> Offering feedback to the player. We also need to s need some way to show the player how they're doing. In order to do this, we'll show them the hangman board as well as the secret word, as well as the secret word with blanks for the letters they haven't all guessed yet. These visuals let them see how closely they are to winning or losing the game. We need to update this information every time the player guesses a letter. We can add a show the board and blanks to the player box to the flowchart between the come up with secret word box and ask the player to guess a letter box, as shown in figure 8-9. The box will remind us that we need to show the player an updated hangman board so they can see which letters they have guessed correctly and which letters are not in the secret word. Okay, so we add this letter to come up with the secret word, show the board and blanks the player, and we actually move the, the arrows of the letter is not in the secret word. That goes back to show the board again. Right? Okay, so our flowchart's coming along pretty nicely here. That looks good. This flowchart completely maps out everything that can possibly happen in Hangman, and in what order. Of course, this flowchart is just an example. You wouldn't really need to use it because you're just using the source code given here. But when you design your own games, a flowchart can help you remember everything you need to code. Summary. The importance of planning out the game. It may seem like a lot of work to sketch out a flowchart about the program first. After all, people want to play games, not look at flowcharts. 
but it is much easier to make changes and notice problems by thinking about how the program works before writing the code for it. If you jump into writing the code first, you may discover problems that require you to change the code you've already written. Every time you change the code, you are taking a chance that you create bugs by changing too little or too much. It is much better to know what you want to build before you build it. Okay, so we're going to go on to chapter 9 and go ahead and build our game.